I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about psoriasis. So um, I'm going to take this opportunity to do a little kind of a whirlwind trip through psoriasis just to kind of give an overview of what it is. Um, so psoriasis is considered a chronic inflammatory skin disease. Basically, it means it's chronic, which means it's almost certainly going to be lifelong. Um, inflammatory means there's inflammation associated with it. So the skin is red and flaky. It tends to look in most people like um, red, thickened, scaly uh, plaques that tend to occur on the elbows, the fronts of the knees, um, and in other parts of the body, often the lower back. It can also affect the scalp and come off as like, you know, big flaky chunks of uh, skin. Basically what happens is that in normal skin, the epidermis, so the top layer of the skin, which has a couple different layers to it, it takes 28 days roughly for the skin to go from the bottom of the epidermis to the top and then shed away. So the bottom cell layer makes their way to the top, takes about a month, and then those skin cells are shed. And that's what you normally, normal skin experiences. In psoriasis, the cells at the base of the epidermis seem to uh, multiply more rapidly than normal, and they move from the base of the epidermis to the surface much more quickly. So there's an increase in the number of dead cells needing to be shed from the surface of the skin on a daily basis. And because you can't shed that that quickly, it will build up over time. So you get this uh, thickened plaque of, of scaly skin because the scale builds up too quickly um, and your, your body can't shed it away. Now, the underlying driver for that or why the skin turns over that quickly in people with psoriasis and in certain parts of the skin, we believe it's an immune related thing. So the immune system, for whatever reason, is, is driving that process. Um, there is some evidence to suggest that it's genetic and there's some genes that have been shown uh, to be responsible for that, but we know that it's very strongly inflammation driven. So um, treatments for psoriasis are aimed at reducing that inflammation to slow down the turnover of the cells so that they don't build up in the way they do in plaques of psoriasis. So um, psoriasis affects two to 4% of um, men and women. So it's relatively common. There's two peak onset ages, one at the age of 15 to 25 and the other at uh, 50 to 60 years of age. Like I said, it's a, a lifelong disease. It tends to occur more commonly in Caucasian people, but it really can affect um, anyone of any skin color or ethnicity. Um, and about one third of patients with psoriasis have a family history of psoriasis. So it seems to run in the family. Um, like I said, genetic factors are, are responsible. And we have a lot of theories about why the skin hyper proliferates or it, it kind of, um, it turns over too quickly in psoriasis, but we do know the immune system is a big part of it. Um, and there's an entirely massive area of pharmacology looking at uh, treatments for psoriasis and they're focused on um, really tackling specific inflammatory mediators in the skin, what we call cytokines, which are messenger proteins, to, to dampen those down to then correct the problem. Now, there's different kinds of psoriasis from a clinical perspective. So you can have um, just localized psoriasis on the scalp, on the hands and the feet. Um, you can have it just on the elbows and on the lower back. You can have small plaque psoriasis where the plaques are very small, cr chronic or large plaque where they're bigger. Um, you can have something called gutted psoriasis, which is associated with um, streptococcal throat infections. Um, you can, of course, get nail involvement, um, and you can have psoriasis that just has nail involvement, where you get lifting and pitting of the nails. It's quite a classical appearance of the fingers and the toenails. Um, it's a condition that needs to be chronically maintained. Um, basically, that means that you need treatment all the time to keep it under control. Um, the mainstay of treatment are topical creams. So the best treatment we have right now in terms of um, creams or topicals is something called Enstelar Foam, which is a combination of a steroid and a vitamin D analog. And the combination of the two in a one foam, it seems to be the best thing topically or as a, as a cream treatment. Um, Enstelar Foam is great. It's called Enstelar, E-N-S-T-I-L-A-R. And what's great about it is that it's easy to apply because it's literally a foam or a mousse. It's not an ointment or a cream, so it's easier for patients to use. Um, and it's very, very effective. So that's the first step in treating body psoriasis. Scalp psoriasis is a totally different problem. 
Um, scalp psoriasis looks different from dandruff, but it may look very similar. Um, usually the plaques are thick and you have like thickened scale. Um, and it can occur on the front of the scalp, you have patches on the back, um, and it can be very annoying. <laughs> so people with scalp psoriasis, um, you know, it's a, it's a really huge problem because it's, you get constant flaking and you can have just scalp psoriasis. So usually dandruff shampoos aren't enough to tackle that. You do need, um, specific treatments. Again, we start with like scalp applications, shampoos, and so on. Um, I don't like using coal tar, but coal tar shampoos are often um, what you're first given, something like Capacel shampoo. I think they smell really bad, so I don't tend to prescribe those. Um, but there are lots of things we can do for scalp psoriasis, but the, the main thing will be to first remove the scale from the scalp with a descaling agent. So you can use glycolic acids or salicylic acids for that. And then once the scale is gone, then you wanna treat the inflammation with a topical steroid scalp application, um, a moderately potent one, something like betonavate, the scalp application to really uh, dampen down that inflammation and stop that cell turnover. So you can't apply steroids to really scaly scalp um, because they won't penetrate through the scale. So scale is like a wall. Um, that doesn't allow things to get through. So it's so important when you're treating scalp psoriasis to talk about getting rid of the scale first. Other types of psoriasis like nail psoriasis, there is no good treatment for nail psoriasis, um, unfortunately. So that's something that you have to learn to manage. Um, there's no great way to get rid of it. Palmo plantar psoriasis um, will be affecting the hands and feet the soles and the palms, and it can be very painful. You get fissuring, a thickened um, kind of plaques on the hands, and that again needs its own kind of treatment, um, depending on how bad it is and, and um, you know, w what kind of treatments would be appropriate. After topical treatments, the next step would be to take tablets, um, and those are usually immunosuppressants that slow down the turnover of cells, for example, something like methotrexate. So your doctor would talk to you about those. Um, they are immunosuppressants, so they have their own side effects and you need blood tests and monitoring and so on. So that's your next step up after using creams if the creams aren't effective or not controlling it. The next step after that would be things called biologics. And those are usually injectable, though we do have um, tablet biologics. And these are very specific medicines that target something specific in that inflammatory cascade. So one of the cytokines, whether it's something like TNF alpha or you know, interleukin 23 with all these funny names, these medications target these specific um, inflammatory mediators to control the psoriasis. And they've been very, very successful. There's tons of research going into those. Um, and there's lots of different ones now available back 10 or 15 years ago when I was training, there weren't that many. Now we have a lot more, um, which is great for patients. They are considered high cost drugs. So they are pretty expensive. So a couple thousand pounds, if not more than that, a year per patient. Um, so they are kind of restricted to those with severe psoriasis or psoriasis that doesn't respond well to normal standard treatment. Um, if you have psoriasis, you definitely want to first make sure that you actually have psoriasis. So getting that diagnosis right is the first step. As I always say, getting the diagnosis right is the first step. And then your next step will be to get the right treatment. So starting with creams and then moving up from there, unless your psoriasis is really severe and you can skip onto something else. So this is definitely something to see a dermatologist about, um, whether it's an NHS dermatologist or any other dermatologist, um, to get you on the right treatment path. So psoriasis is manageable, but it's not curable. It is a chronic inflammatory condition. Um, so if you do have it, you can definitely manage it so you don't have to struggle with it. We can definitely get it under control, but you are going to be committed to controlling it probably for your whole life with whether it's creams or tablets or a combination. So there you go. There is a rundown of the basics of psoriasis.